Only a few times in the history of NCAA football has the number one Heisman candidate and the number two Heisman candidate met on the football field. Every single time this has happened, it's been nothing but epicness, and that's what we're setting up for today. We got two great teams beating up, top 10 ranked Clemson Tigers, top five ranked Miami Hurricanes. They are about to meet in the ACC championship game. We're looking at Clemson's schedule, man. They haven't beat an opponent that is currently ranked. They've had some tough games. They only got one loss on the season. Miami only has one loss on the season, but if you look at their schedule, you see a few more numbers up besides some of their opponents. They've definitely played a tougher schedule. None of that matters today. In this series, Clemson and Miami has met on the field a few times. They've met in the ACC championship game a few times. And every time these two teams meet, it'd be epic. I'm telling you. So I have no reason to expect anything other than epicness here today. Miami's on top of the coastal side. Clemson is on top of the Atlantic side. It's about to be fireworks. I'll see you guys at the coin toss. All right, folks, this cold weather didn't stop it from being a packed house here in Charlotte, North Carolina. We're here in the Bank of America Stadium where the number seven ranked Clemson Tigers would try to win that ACC championship. And they got the number three ranked Miami Hurricanes on the opposite side of the field trying to prevent that from happening. We get down to the field where the Miami Hurricanes start today's festivities off with the football. Of course, their offense is bolstered by the running attack of the number one Heisman candidate in the nation, Mark Walton. However, and I'm sure it was enough film study that Clemson was ready for the run and they was able to get Miami's offense off the field quick. Special teams unit comes out, punt it off, and we get our first look at the Clemson offense and they actually look like they want to come out and establish the run as well. Their running back, Brent Love, has some success on the ground, already averaging eight yards a pop after a couple of carries. This isn't what we was expecting. Their Heisman candidate is this guy right here, Kelly Bryant, the dual threat quarterback, who takes off running right here. He only gets a couple of yards before the Canes defense is able to get him down. So here we are early in the game. We've seen both teams' offenses, and we've seen both teams' defenses get that offense up off the field. Miami's offense is back on the field. Had a little bit of success right there on the ground running the ball, but on third down, Josh Owen drops back the pass. Throws a beautiful strike to Lawrence Cager. Cager got his mitts on it and just couldn't reel it in. Special teams comes back on the field again. That's two times, two strikeouts for the Miami offense. Kelly Bryant taking off. This kid has wheels, gets to the outside, and he is forced out of bounds. 21 yards on the ground. He's played in the shadow of the great Deshaun Watson. And this is the year that he had been shutting up the naysayers. But this one right here might be the biggest game of his young career. And maybe some early jitters right here. He drops back. Nobody was open. He throws in the coverage anyway, trying to force it to the receiver, Nathan Harris. If you guys remember, Nathan Harris had a verbal commit to Miami, decommitted, and decided he was going to go to the Clemson Tigers. Miami never forgot about that. And every time they play Nathan Harris, they play this guy as physical as can be. Miami's offense is back on the field, folks, and now we're starting to see them get some things going. Saw some success through the air. Now you're going to see Mark Walton doing what he does, running that football on the ground. Second down, you can't forget about Josh Horn. This guy is a speedster. When he first got to the school, he was more of a running back than a quarterback. At this point, with his gunslinger mentality, he can throw the football. He will throw the football, but you cannot forget that he'll take off running. Right here, Mark Walton gets eight on the ground. Beautiful pickup. I like the drive Miami is on. Second and short. They're going to give it to Walton again. The spin move frees him up to pick up another yard or two. Nothing major, but he continues to go forward. Later in that drive on third and short, they go to the screenplay. They've got Walton. That's the spin move again. He bounces outside, and they finally get him down inside the 10-yard line. 20-plus yards on the play. Mark Walton is a big play waiting to happen. On first and goal, Dominique Lee. Dips under a blocking offensive lineman. Three-yard pickup on the play. That's the craziest thing I've seen all day. And on third and goal, they line up, pitch it over to Walton. He's got the edge. He finds the end zone. No 
shocker here that Miami gets in the end zone for their first score of the day, and it is on the legs of Mark Walton. This guy right here has a nose for the end zone. He just got a nose for running the football. Like, if it's a gap, if it's a hole on the field, he's going to find it. 7-0 is your score. I know the Clemson offense wants to get back into the game, but Ray Lewis Jr. Jr. lowers the boom on Brent Love. Brent, don't run into 5-2, man. That dude is savage. Second down, beautiful pass right here from Bryant. Andy Henderson, 21-yard pickup, barely getting the foot in bounds. Big-time pickup for this offense. That's the type of stuff they need to be able to do. Everything can't be just trying to run outside with Bryant. That's not going to work. Henderson right here was in man coverage with Ray Lewis Jr. The one issue with Ray is his speed. Henderson got away. Beautiful pass. Big-time pickup for Clemson. They are in the red zone, threatening the score. They want to tie this game up. Miami's defense here on third and six, backed up to the end zone. They need to make a play. Kelly throws into the flats, and Ray Lewis Jr. is right there for the stop. And after that beautiful drive, the Tigers have to settle for three. I know they'll take the points, but that is not what they wanted. Seven and three is the score here in the second quarter. Josh Horn tries to keep it on the read option. That ain't working. Third and nine, he throws into the flats. Hits the tight end, Scott Jackson, who picks up seven. He's gonna need a couple of more. Punt unit comes back on. Wow, man. I don't know if we've seen Miami punt the ball this much all season. That's already the third punt, maybe fourth punt so far of this game. There's still four minutes to go before the half. It's a lot of football left, and we still got a four-point game. Kelly Bryant keeps it right here. Darts to the outside, runs into Ray Lewis again. I'm telling you, man, this kid is just like his father. He finds the ball. He makes plays. He makes plays. On second down, Brent Love is stood up in the backfield. That's the free safety, Willie Irvin. They sent him on a blitz. He gets the tackle for a loss to put Clemson in a third and manageable five situation right here. Kelly Bryant drops back. He's got time. He's got happy feet, though. I don't know if he felt pressure or what. He tried to run. Miami was there. They were, they were waiting for him. He gets sacked, gives up the yardage. Miami offense back on the field, and Mark Walton is looking to eat. 14 yards on the outside run. And with that carry, he jumps into the record books, surpassing Willis McGahee for most rushing yards in the season. Man, it's been some great running backs to come through Miami. And for Mark Walton to get his name in the history books, that's major. That's major. Third down, play action pass for Josh Horn, who rolls out. Kept his eyes down the field, throws a strike to Demetrius Mitchell, 19 yards on the pickup. They had a spy on Horn, so they are aware of the fact that this kid will take off running. He looked like he wanted to run, kept his eyes downfield. This is signs that he is getting even better. Comes back right here, throws another strike to Scott Mitchell. 30 yard pickup. They back in the red zone, folks. 15 seconds on the clock. You just turn around and hand it to Walton. He'll do the rest. Beautiful, beautiful drive, folks. That's all we got for the first half out here. 14 to three is the score. We've seen some defense on both sides. However, Miami's offense seems like they may have just figured something out. At the end of the first half, Miami has over 100 yards passing, over 70 yards rushing, no turnovers, which is the big one right here, and they dominate in time of possession. That's not the formula for success. However, Clemson, who deferred after winning the coin toss, to start the second half off with possession, they need to score here. I feel like they need to score here. I mean, it's a lot of football left, but I feel like they need to score. Bryant, with time in the pocket, throws a beautiful comeback route over to Justin Smith. 10-yard pickup, first and 10 for the Tigers. Third down and long, late in that drive, Bryant, feeling pressure that's not necessarily there, throws a pass he didn't have to throw. This time he's picked off by Michael Jackson, the senior corner. This kid has had a phenomenal career. Comes up with a big time pick here. Bryant just looks uneasy. Like he's feeling pressure that's not there. And this isn't gonna be good for the Heisman voters. Everybody wanted to see which one of these kids would step up and like solidify their Heisman campaign. And so far, Bryant, it don't look like he's ready for the lights. It just don't look like it. Miami's offense is back on the field and you know Walton. The later the game goes, man, it's like the more energy this kid gets. Look at him, shedding the tackle right here, falling forward, we're almost getting the first. Being brought down inches away from that yellow marker. They will pick up that first down on the very next play, continuing to run the football as you see Walton does right here where he picks up another nine on the ground. See, this is, this is the game plan right here. You keep running that rock, 
You're moving the ball. You're driving down the field. You're chewing up this clock, and you're killing this defense. I'm seeing these big fellas put their hands on their knees. They've been in over. They, they want to come out. These guys want a breather, and this Miami drive continues. Right here, John Rice with the spinner Rooney that keeps him upright so he can get the first down there inside the five. First and goal with his team is so tough to stop, and Neat Leach gets in the end zone. Big time score for the Canes. A lot of people didn't know how it would go this year. Mixing in Dominique Leak. A lot of people felt like he got in in red zone situations and stole a couple of touchdowns away from Mark Walton. But we spoke with Mark before the game. Mark says not only is it not a problem, he assured us that after he leaves this program, Neek is going to continue to take this program forward. Said he's one of the best running backs he's ever seen. You guys actually get along great. Miami defense out here making a statement. Kelly Bryant looks like he is lost in the South, fam. He ain't ready for the bright lights out here. It's late in the game. It's fourth and short. They got to go for it. They pick up the yards on the ground. Terrence Taylor picks up about 10 on the play. He's going to continue this drive. And even though it's still four minutes and some change on the clock, anything can happen. Right now, I kind of feel like Clemson's door is slammed shut. And to be honest with you, I'm disappointed in what I saw from Kelly Bryan. I expected this kid to come out here and solidify his Heisman candidacy and just make for one of the best games we've seen all season. And right now, I'm looking at this game like it's been all Miami, but it's still some time. Let's just see. Three minutes to go. Bryan takes off running, does get north and south, darts around, picks up the first down before being slammed to the turf. Kind of took a big hit at the end of that play, but he seems to be okay. After a holding penalty, first and 15, he drops back, throws a strike across the middle. Big time hit at the end of that play. Brent Bailey, 17 yards on the play. Clemson inside the five. They hand it off. That's a big time hit from Jaquan Johnson. Brent Love gets three yards on the play. He's going to be stopped shy of the market, though. So no huddle offense. They're going to line him back up. They're going to go again. But folks, it's under three minutes on the clock. And even if they score here, look at the deficit. They hand it off. Brent Love does get in the end zone. He's here. It is Clemson's first touchdown of the game, and it's less than three minutes to go. That's a disappointment. Let's throw it back to the studio for a quick update. Stanford and UCLA look like they had a hell of a game, maybe even a better game than what we're watching over here in the ACC championship game. But Stanford was able to get the best of the better ranked UCLA team. We get back to this game. Clemson, of course, is going for the onside kick, and Lawrence Cager is able to get to the pigskin after... It was kind of mishandled by a Miami teammate. Now, Miami could really run the football, get a couple of first downs, choose some clock, get out of here. But I'm going to tell you what I know about Mark Rick and the Miami Hurricanes. The fact that this Clemson team just scored, they went for the onside kick. I'm telling you, Mark Rick got this theory. If you're going to be out here trying to get the win, if you ain't through fighting, he ain't through fighting. And I can already tell the way this drive is going. They are looking to score. Second and seven, Horn hands it off to Walton. Walton gets some blockers. He's outside, and that's a beautiful tackle. Touchdown saving tackle. If he turns that corner, it's a wrap. But it's first and 10. They're right here at the 20-yard line. Walton dips inside, picks up about six or seven on that play. They're definitely looking to score. Oh, Miami's still passing. Josh Horn is hit hard. The Clemson players are pissed off. They're standing over Horn. They're letting them hear about it. Third and 10, they drop back. Miami is definitely looking to pass again. Horn is flushed out the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield, throws a strike into the back of the end zone, hits Derek Clark for a 15-yard touchdown. Folks, I don't know how you feel about it. A lot of folks are going to say this is unsportsmanlike, but I say you play till you run to the tape. This is the Miami football that I've become a fan of. Miami sends a statement here in this ACC championship game, and you know what's crazy? I look over across the field at Nathan Harris and... Anytime they tried to go to Nathan Harris, Miami was all over it. You gotta wonder what type of pro career Nathan Harris can have because he didn't really have this celebrated career at Clemson. Maybe the kid should have went to Miami. Just maybe. I'm just saying. But 28 to 11 is your final score here. Quite frankly, Miami came out of control this game from early on and they carried the momentum all the way through. It's a disappointing loss for Clemson. Those kids had a wonderful season. And they're going to have a hard time getting this loss right here out of their minds. But congratulate these Miami Hurricanes. They are your ACC champs. I'm Case Spade, the Prospect, signing off from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, do me a favor. Leave that like if you're new. Hit subscribe, and I'm out to the next time, folks.
Peace.